Welcome to the Total Boss Podcast, and I'm your host, Cristiano Green, a podcast where we talk about finding fulfillment through self-development, being a leader of your own life, and getting the most out of it as well. Tenacity, originality, talent, authenticity, and being legendary. It's all about living your best life. Hello, 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 all you Total Bosses out there, and welcome to another episode of the Total Boss Podcast. Now, I am your host, Cristiano Green, and I am a relationship coach for gay men, and I love helping gay men find love and also become being masters of all of their relationships by focusing on the most important relationship in their life, which is with themselves. Now, I help them to attract and create healthy, loving, and passionate relationships in their life because that's what life is all about. Now, this week on the podcast, I really wanted to talk about one of my favorite topics and one of the ones that uh, I get a lot of questions about. And, you know, I, I've shared a lot of reels about this, some content about this. And um, the topic is love languages. Now, you know, some of you may know what love languages are and some may not, but really what love languages are, there are five of them. Um, The languages are of how people like to, you know, give and receive love. Now, oftentimes, you know, a lot of the languages that we have um, that we like to receive love by often have probably come down from, you know, our parents or our role models in life, you know, and that may be by how they showed us love or how they didn't show us love. And because of that, you know, oftentimes because we didn't get the love in that way, we crave it um, from from our partners, right? And so when we can get into relationships and you have different people, people have different love languages. And so oftentimes the way that we show love is the way that we want to receive love. So I'm going to go deeper into each of the five love languages and then share with you some simple and effective tips how you can utilize this whether you're in a relationship now or whether you're getting into the dating scene as well, right? So it's interesting because when you learn this stuff, you start to be aware of how your partner or your potential dates Uh, love languages are as well. And so when you can do that, that starts to build your connection on a deeper level because if people are receiving what they need from you, then you start to become more valuable to them and then that starts to build the connection. And again, it's also about learning how you can express and share your love language with other people so people can love you the way that you choose to be loved as well. So let's jump into the first one. Now, the first love language is words of affirmation. Now, really um, any form of words will do, written or spoken, um, is really a great way to fill up the love tank, right? Um, someone who really loves words of affirmation, you know, really loves words of encouragement. So basically, you know, telling your partner that you love them, telling them all the things that you do are like about them and appreciate about them, sending them nice text messages, you know, if they're on social media, commenting on their posts, you know, they love that type of thing as well. So words of affirmation are super important to these people and it really speaks deeply to a person with this love language, right? So it's just about really focusing on how you can be um, really active and conscious about the words and the praise and the recognition so that you can really show someone how important they are to you. So that's words of affirmation. That's love language number one. Now, if you are, let's just say that you've got a partner, obviously, and you, and you, you, you realize that this is their, you know, love language about being active and focused on really understanding how you can express that more, right? Like I said, if you're, if your love language is something different and you've been trying to show that in that way, this is where the mismatch could be. So really making sure that if this is your partner's, you show a lot of love and affection to them through the words that you're speaking as well. Now, again, if you're dating and you find, uh, you're on a date and you figure out that, wow, this person's very expressive. They love that. And they, um, they start to really, um, hone in on some of the words that you're saying and you can start to see that working on them. This might be a, some uh, ways that you can see that words of affirmation are their, their love language. Now, obviously, you don't want to be on the first date telling someone that you love them because probably most people will run for the hills. But I'm not telling you to go tell every single person around the corner that you love them because that would be silly and suicide and you should never be saying things that you don't mean just to impress someone, right? It's about showing your true affection that you truly care, that you're truly thinking of them and the things that they do and the things that they are for you as well. So again, if you're on the first day, uh, you know, it might be simple things as, I really like your style. I really like how you've dressed up. Oh, wow, that's, you You know, you, you've got a, it seems like you've got your head on your shoulders. You've got a great career. You seem really intelligent. 
things like that that are really going to affirm them will make you um, connect on a deeper level. So those are good ways that you can go on, on, on dates and really start to, to use that as well as to your advantage. Now, the second love language is going to be um, physical touch. Now, this love language is all about, you know, hugging, being close to each other, sitting together, holding hands, you know, um, sex even, right? Physical, people who love physical touch really just feel the most love when someone's just holding them, right? Someone's with them there and, you know, embracing them, right? Because they feel cared for physically. Because oftentimes in life, you know, some people grow up and they don't really receive love in that way. And so they find that this is an important way for them to understand love. Because maybe again, they, 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 their model of the world is that they don't understand that love can be expressed in different ways. And because maybe their parents weren't expressive with, you know, hugging, etc they might feel that they're they're lacking then so you showing that to them is going to be super important now again obviously if you're in a relationship this is uh, a great way for you to you know figure out ways to, to do more of that right again you may be one of the people that's not your love language that way but if your partner wants this it's a great way for them to feel safe feel loved and feel validated within your relationship so making time for you to to sit on the on the couch and hug each other to to walk down the streets and hold each other's hands to to make time for being intimate and have more sex in your relationship you know obviously the the relationship isn't based just on sex but that's a part of it and some people feel the love when they're when they're feeling connected in that way so again obviously if you're going to go on dates with people you know sometimes that leads to sex on the first day but it's not always the 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 best way to 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 really think of a potential partner by having sex on the first date right now again everyone's different and you do you boo um but over here i would be talking more about the you know maybe you know reaching over and putting your hand on their hand if it feels right you know making sure that if you're sitting somewhere that you're close enough to them that you're feeling like you're you're touching them you know maybe putting your hand on their leg uh or maybe even you know when you get a chance to to if you're walking down the street you know grab one of their hands or give them a hug or even a good kiss good night right thinking about those things that you could do on dates that would show someone who has this love language as important now maybe they'll be expressing it because you'll see them quite quite physical with themselves and and seem that way don't always run off um from it because again on dates some people would be like oh this person's too touchy-feely blah 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 It's just understanding their love language as well. So it's just being focused on really being aware of that love language and that other people expressing that may not be a bad thing. It's just understanding love languages. Now, number three we've got here for love language is receiving gifts. Now, people who with this love language really love meaningful gifts. Now, it doesn't matter about the cost or the size or the extravagance of them. It can mean many different things, right? Someone could be as simple as hand making a card and and writing a nice letter to you right that's a beautiful gift it could be someone buying something that you've you know that is meaningful to you like for example you could be spiritual someone like you know brings you a gift of a crystal right it doesn't have to be a big thing but it's something that means a lot to that person now the reason why people love these types of things is because they feel that people um get them and understand them have spent time on thinking of something that that person would like so people who receive these love this way you know, it's it's a great way for you to understand that sometimes people express love by feeling like you have have been thoughtful to them. It's not about giving them presents and and, and meaningless presents. It's about the meaning behind the present. That's where they find the love as well in it. So if you've got a partner who likes to receive their love by receiving gifts, again, you know, think about quality, not quantity, or price price point what is something they really like and what could you give them you know it could be the fact that you you know they love uh, a, a bit of cheesecake and, and you surprise them with some cheesecake you know whatever it could be something small as that can really be a nice way um for you to, to to fill up your partner's love tank of receiving gifts right now again if you're on a date with someone maybe you're the first date it's going to be difficult for you to bring a gift and understand unless you've had you know a bit of conversation before you know them beforehand right you might understand that that is that maybe on the first date you might want to bring someone some flowers or something cute that you know something small they would love that probably a great icebreaker for some of it right now obviously you know again if, if you've just met someone online and this is the first time you're meeting them you don't really know the love language it's hard to do that but again if maybe on the first date you, you you figure it out or you and you have a second date maybe it's the second date where you bring something there as well so just thinking about what you can do to incorporate that as well 
So let's move on to love language number four. Now this is quality time, which is my love language. Now I love spending quality time with the people I love, especially my partner. Now obviously quality time is all about focused, intentional time where you can uh, spend giving your partner attention. Now this includes communication, this includes active listening, eye contact, and a conscious effort on appreciating and prioritizing the other person. This is just about really understanding that a lot of people nurture and enjoy quality time together. And this is where you can create a space where you can truly connect free of anything that's taking away your focus. So, you know, if you're with someone, you're going out for dinner with them, you know, and they love quality time, don't spend your time on your phone. I know it's so common these days that we just get on our phones and half the time we're we're at lunch or dinner and we're not really connecting with the other person. Someone with their love language will find that dish respectful or find that really rude and, and maybe not feel that you're in, they're important to you. So if you're going out on a date, get your phone away, put it on vibrate, put it on, on on do not disturb and give your attention to your partner because this will show them how much you love them by really focusing on the quality time as well. So making sure that you're available. Now, again, this is probably pretty easy to figure out. This is probably one of the easier ones to figure out for it. So if you're going on a date with someone, again, just being there, being present. Don't have your phone out again. That's an important thing. Just being present and listening, active listening. Don't listen with the intent to speak because so many people go out there with the intention of, okay, I'm I'm just waiting for my chance to speak about me. It's about often asking questions, active listening, and creating a conversation, right? Don't just not hear them and wait for your chance to speak because that's just not going to connect you. It's about really understanding, hearing them, seeing them, connecting to them so that you can then have a proper flowing conversation with them as well. So that's quality time. And then the fifth love language we have is acts of service. Now, this is the the way that my partner um, shows love to me. This is his love language, right? So he loves to do things for me that are going to make my life better and easier. So oftentimes, you know, he'll make sure that if I'm working early in the morning that I've got breakfast and I've got coffee there that you know when I'm sort sorting out a new office that he comes and makes sure that it's getting painted that the internet's set up that the cleaners coming in and doing all the things he likes to be prepared and do all the things like that and that's how he shows love the most to me and I really appreciate and love that right you know making sure that I'm taken care of so that I can be my best and then you know that's how he shows his love to me and I really love that so again this is such easy ways where you can show love to other people through acts of service so again if, if you're in a relationship and this person loves that you know what's what's something that you can do that's going to show them you care about them what's something you can do that can help make their life a little bit easier right whether it's you know doing the laundry for someone or getting a cleaner in or whatever it is just to make that life easier that will make a lot of difference in the in your relationship by finding ways to do that um now, again, if you're on a, a date with someone, it might be harder for you to think of things that you can do to do that. But let's just say, you know, you might realize that, um, you know, you're going on a date with someone and they're, you know, they have to, to get somewhere. It might be that you say, hey, look, you know, how about I, I organize for an Uber for you? Something simple like that might be an act of service that someone's going to love, right? Because they're going, wow, this person's really keen and spending time to get to know me. They're they're even going to pay for an Uber to for them to come to to dinner, right? Now, again, I'm not saying you have to do this, but I'm just trying to get you to think of little things that you can think of on a date that if still the person that you are with has this love language. So again, we've got those five love languages, love languages, which are words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts quality time and acts of service. So super important what you know how you're going to be able to manage this and live your life in the best ways to really understand and know your love language first of all. So which love language makes me feel the most joy to receive? That would be a question you might want to ask yourself. And which of the love language which which what lack of love languages hurts the most? So it's also about understanding what you're going to bring the most joy and if you don't have will cause the most pain. So that's two ways that you can undercover and understand which of your love languages are the most important to you. Because when you know that, this is so important for you to then realize and um, that maybe you've been showing love to people by the, the way that you want to receive it. So oftentimes, if you're not sure, think about the way that you often show love to your friends, your your family, your partner, etc. as well, yeah? Number two is to understand and know your partner's love language or the person that you're going on a date with love language, right? Because once you've got a grasp of yourself, then you'll be able to focus on 
you know, the other person. Now, if you're both compatible in love languages and, you know, you've got the same love languages, then you're probably on the, already on a good page because if you're giving and receiving love the same way and they have the same love language, then boom, you, you, you're a match made in heaven. But very rarely that's going to happen, right? So really getting an understanding of what your partner's um, love language is, is just going to be the best way that you can then start to give love in that way as well. And then have the conversation and communication with them around love languages. So again, that they can start showing you love in the way that you want to be loved as well. Now, third kind of step would be, again, we talked about this earlier that, you know, know your parents' love languages because again, oftentimes people's love languages these days are, are based on however their, part, their, their parents gave love or didn't give love to them, right? They, they weren't receiving love in that way. So they feel like this is now their love language because they craved it so much from their parents. So really understanding your parents will help you have a under, better understanding. And maybe it will also help you to, you know, heal from previous wounds by just understanding that their love language was different and you really, really received love in the way that they were trying to give it to them because that was their love language as well. Now, the next one is just to go deeper, deeper, deeper into this, right? Now, just ticking off the love languages and, and saying, boom, 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 I've done that, isn't going to cut it these days, right? We're in the 21st century, you know? You want to really go deep and be thoughtful when you're with these love languages and how you can express them because, you know, if you want to have, build a deeper connection with your partner or someone that you're dating, it's about really being thoughtful. It's about really being focused and really having a sense of understanding and putting meaning into the love that you're giving, not just to do it to tick a box and say, yep, yeah, I, 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 I cooked dinner that Wednesday night, we're good. That's not how it's going to be. It's about going, what is really going to be a way that I can be of service to my partner that he's going to feel loved as well, right? So just really being um, aware of that is the next step for you to truly take it to the next level. And then focused, really, the last one is that money isn't going to buy you love, right? Sometimes people think that just being, you know, showy and giving money and gifts and travel and all of that stuff is going to really substitute for deeply understanding love languages and love. So what I would suggest for you to do is to really realize that these languages are here. People have been studying them for years. It's an important part of all relationships. And the more you understand them, the more you're going to have better, deeper connections, whether that's just with your partner, potential date, your friends, your family, your colleagues, your team. The more you understand other people's love languages, the more you can speak and communicate. Now, this will be in business. This will be in friendship. This will be in wealth building, anything, right? If you can figure things out and understand how people operate, you will just take it to the next level on your level of communication and growth with that. So I trust that this um, episode has been super valuable. Again, I, as you can probably hear in my voice, I'm super passionate about love languages and, um, you know, it's something that I really like to talk about because I believe that this is an important part of people's relationships. So I'm going to leave it there. Again, if you have questions, comments, always feel free to, you know, pop a question or comment below here or just reach out to me on Facebook. I love chatting with you guys when you have questions and tell me what stuff you want to talk about because you like I like you guys to shape, you know, the conversation as well. Um, other than that, I'm super excited. I'll be running my relationship mastery workshop tomorrow. It's a brand new workshop and I'm super pumped up for it. So I'm getting myself ready and prepared. That's what I'll be doing for the rest of the day. And I will catch you next week for another episode of the Total Boss Podcast. Now, always remember that you have got this and I've got you.